Hey yo, what is up? Today's video, we are looking at the difference between a $20 R1 and a $40 R1 and which one is better value. Uh, the $20 mouse is the R1 SE Plus and the $40 mouse is the R1 Pro Max Yellow. Uh, both mice are the newest versions of the R1 series. Uh, the R1 SE is the uh, newest extended battery life and uh, the cheapest entry-level mouse in the R1 uh, Dragonfly series. And the yellow Pro Max is the newest version of the flagship Dragonfly mouse with uh, 4K polling if you buy the um, optional dongle of course. Uh, before we talk about the differences, let me tell you uh, what they both have in common first. Okay, there's a lot of differences but they've got something in common. They both have the web-based UI for their settings and customizations uh, just like any other self-respecting AAA mouse brand. You just go to the website. It's um, I'll leave a link for you guys if you want to go check it out. It's ATK Hub Web. You click on the initialize device, allow browser access and then as you can see because I've got two mouses connected uh, you can either click the, the one with the 4K receiver or you can use the one with the 1K dongle. We'll just go with the 4K receiver for the time being. And this is the yellow mouse and it shows you your Dragonfly R1 Pro Max connected to it. Go to the settings. It is just like your uh, downloaded settings. Um, you know, if you download the Dragonfly settings um, software, you get the same thing. Uh, you can do all your dpi performance settings or your uh, liftoff distance mobile sync uh, performance mode ultra long distance mode everything is here all your macros um, 2k 4k 1k up to you it's all here and then uh, if i want to connect if i want to configure the the r1 se i'll just go back to this mouse button here it says cannot connect but i can do this again allow connection then go to my 1k dongle click connect and then now i'm on the dragonfly r1 se uh, long life battery version here with 15 percent battery remaining go to my settings again the same thing 1k 500 hertz obviously this one only has 1k polling maximum so that is your web browser thing which is pretty cool isn't it i mean you cannot deny that uh the f one of the you know the the main differences is of course uh between the r1 se and the pro max you can clearly see is the color the r1 se uh, plus only comes in black or white uh, you've seen me do a review on the white version of the r1 se uh, the r1 se plus also has black or white while the Pro Max um, has literally six colors, if you go out on, onto the website vxe.com, uh, you can see the pro, you select Pro Max and all these um, options will come to you. You've got the white, you've got black, you've got this sunset orange, which is pretty cool looking. It's kind of like a vaxi orange. And then Phantom Powder is more like your, uh, this color, right? The G Pro Super Light kind of magenta color. And then you've got the lemon yellow, which is what I got here right now. The lemon, lemon yellow in real life looks, the yellow looks more like a tennis ball now on camera. It looks kind of like a regular yellow, but in real life, it looks more like a tennis ball kind of yellow. And then the cloud lavender looks a lot like a vaxi kind of uh, lavender purple. So it's pretty cool. So that is the first difference. The second difference here is of course the uh, coating. The R1 SE Plus is the entry level mouse and therefore has no, uh, well, it has a coating, it's plastic, but you don't have the rubberized coating. It feels like an old, it feels like the old Razer Death Adder kind of, you know, just basically just plastic with a little bit of texture. Uh, you know, by no means is it inferior, if I'm honest. 
I like it just as much as um, the Pro Max coating, even though this is no coating. Uh, the Pro series, of course, you've got the Pro and the Pro Max, they have rubberized coating like the G Pro Super Light. Uh, I would say the coating is not as rubbery as an Endgame Gear coating, but it does provide some extra uh, grippy grip, you know what I mean? Uh, it's not better than no grip, but it provides a different feel to the mouse. And you know, if you like the rubbery grip, this is for you. If you don't like rubbery grip, this is for you. Uh, the difference number three is the clicks. I'm going to turn this off right now because I'm going to demonstrate the clicks to you and I do not want to press anything accidentally. The R1 SE Plus got an upgrade from the regular R1 SE. The R1 SE was terrible, the, the clicks were horrible, I don't know what switches they were using. I noticed the difference on the M1, M2 feel, uh, I think they've changed out the switches and the R1 SE Plus is significantly better than the old R1 SE. While the yellow Pro Max remains the same as the old uh, Pro Max um, using Kale Ice Berry, I think they are white in color and they work really good. Uh, in fact, I would venture to say it is just as good as a uh, Huano Blue Shell Pink Dots. Now the difference number four is the MCU and sensor. The R1 SE uses a, uh, they call it a Shanghai Beacon MCU, which I don't know what that means but I think it's a brand, the brand is called Beacon and it's kind of like an older sensor, it is not. On paper it says it's a 3395 SE sensor but uh, I do not think that uh, it has got anything to do with 3395 if I'm being honest. I think it's an older sensor, even older than the 3370 but uh, you know it works fine um, and I think it's pretty good for a 1K sensor. Um, the Pro Max, however, is using a, a Nordic MCU, which is all the all the AAA brands are using Nordic MCUs, um, and that allows for 4K compatibility. And it also has a PixArt 3395 sensor. All the latest mouses are using 3395 sensors. Now, in practical terms, I cannot notice uh, the difference between the two in terms of performance. I point it, I click it, and shit happens. So it's good enough for me. Uh, they both have 500 milliamp battery for your information. And the old R1 SE only had a uh, 250 milliamp battery. However, uh, you know, even though these two have the same battery, I think the Pro Max is rated for 150 hours, while the R1 SE Plus is rated for 70 hours. And um, this got large, has largely to do with the MCU. This one with the Beacon and this one with the Nordic. Um, I think the R1 SE just draws more power and the Nordic MCU is just more efficient. That's why you're getting more hours on it. Now, lastly, the R1 SE also has a slight advantage over the Pro Max and you're going to see it right at the bottom here. You can see the switches. This one on the Pro Max only has an on-off switch. The R1 SE Plus has a Bluetooth option, which means you can connect this to your tablet. You can connect this to your phone. You have a little arrow on your phone if you want to mouse over your phone, which means it has a little bit more portability. You can take it on the road with you for your tablet or your laptop or your, you know, you want to type on your phone with a Bluetooth keyboard and a Bluetooth mouse, you can do that if you want to. So in conclusion, which one is the best value proposition as I try to speak over the rain happening behind me? I'm just going to keep the video going because I don't want to ruin this take, which I think is pretty good. Uh, my conclusion is the R1 SE Plus is the best value for money at about half the price of the already super value Pro Max, which is 40 bucks. This $20, $20 mouse is better than a lot of $50 mouses that are out there. Uh, the skates are, the stock skates are pretty good. I don't need to change them. 
but button actuations are pretty good uh, 1k polling is excellent the clicks on the mouse 1 and mouse 2 is just as good as the clicks on the Pro Max it is slightly different you can feel a difference uh, I mentioned earlier that the Pro Max clicks is almost indistinguishable from the uh, Pro version which is using the Huano switches and this one is not far from that either so what I'm saying is if you are if you find that the click implementation mouse one mouse two very important to you uh, and you're worried that if you pick an R1 SE plus uh, you're not going to get premium click feel you are wrong the R1 SE plus has a click feel that is uh, almost indistinguishable from a premium Pro Max or the Pro with the Huano uh, you know superior um, switches so yeah that is my conclusion of the video uh, if you're buying a $20 mouse it is not going to be very far away from a $40 mouse so I'd rather buy two of these one white and one black and I wouldn't have to buy a Pro Max I just use two R1 SE plus with 1000 polling but if 2k polling 4k polling is important for you then pick up a Pro or a Pro Max and you will get that sorted out for you as well anyway hope you enjoyed this video and took some useful information on the R1 SE plus and the R1 Pro Max the latest offerings from um, VXE R1 Dragonfly series and um, yeah I hope you benefited from this video anyway thanks for watching I will see you on the next one oh by the way I also got my matching VXE mouse pad so this is the perfect combination um, you know otherwise anything other than matching pads with matching mouses it's going to be gg for you guys in case you didn't know anyway see you on the next video bye